Merry Christmas. Right? Merry Christmas. It's Christmas morning. And I always love having Christmas on a Sunday. We should figure out a way to have this every year. Yeah. And this morning, we finish off Advent. We do so by lighting the fifth candle of Advent, which is the Christ candle. It's the center one right here. So I'm going to light that real quick. Go real slow. There it goes. And at the end of the message today, we will have communion. And so if you're watching online and you want to join us in communion, you can pause anytime along here and go ahead and get your stuff ready or pause when we get there and get your elements in that and you can have it at home. But this morning, I want to do something a little bit different. I think it's a little bit different anyway, because oftentimes when you hear the Christmas message, you know, you, you go to Luke chapter two and it's, it's, it's Linus and Charlie Brown, right? I bring you good tidings of great joy. We just watched that yesterday. It was on Apple TV. And we haven't seen that in so many years. It's amazing what you could pack into 30 minutes if you really tried to. But, you know, Charlie wants the meaning of Christmas. And, of course, I bring you good tidings of great joy for born unto you in the city of David as a Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. And that's usually where we're at. But today I want to fast forward a little bit. And I say that because there's some speculation as to when uh, these guys really showed up. Uh, it was on Christmas night. And I can remember uh, somebody once told me that, you know, uh, the wise men weren't there on Christmas, that they were on their way. And then, you know, they looked at that, that. So one year we were decorating for church or for Christmas here at the church. And um, they were getting ready to put the wise men up. And I said, no, you can't put them there yet. We've got to put them back in the corner back here because they're still working their way here. But they put them there anyway, okay? But what I want to focus on this morning is the idea of gifts. And so um, I'm going to talk about the gifts of the wise men. Of course, we have a treasure chest full of gold here. Uh, it's not real gold, so don't get too excited. But uh, for some, it's real gold because there's chocolate inside of it, okay? Yeah, that's right. Uh, and then we have here some oils, frankincense and myrrh. So we, uh, we decided to bring some of that up. But what I really want to talk about, I'm entitled this morning's message, The Gift, is the fact that I don't believe this was the only gift given at Christmas. Okay? I believe it's more than that. And so let's, I want to talk about that this morning. So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And so if you would stand with me this morning, if you're able, I'll read the, read the word of God. I'm going to read the New King James today. Um, I couldn't read that. You know, I want to keep the language somewhat understandable, so I didn't go KJV, but New King James is pretty close, right? So it says, And now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For all, out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And Herod went. And when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from, from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him, bring his word back to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child marry his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gifts of gold, they presented gifts to him of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Father, I thank you for this word. I ask your blessing upon it. Anoint it, Father, and speak to us this hour through this word we pray. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So this morning, 
We celebrate the fifth Sunday of Advent with the lighting of the Christ candle. It's hard to imagine that five weeks, um, five weeks between Thanksgiving and today have passed so quickly. I mean, it's just hard to imagine how quickly things go. And when you do something like this where it's broken down, it seems to go even faster. Uh, but uh, it has passed along. Looking back to week one, and if you uh, didn't, weren't here for week one, or you didn't watch the sermon online for week one, it's out there and you can do it, so I'm not going to retell the story that I told uh, in the first week, but I shared the story from the movie The Bishop's Wife. Now in our house, on Christmas Eve, we have a little spread that we put out, we had it last night, and uh, we went to bed because we're both ate too much food, we watched It's a Wonderful Life, and so this morning we were talking, and Debbie said, well, what are you going to watch today? I said, it's The Bishop's Wife, right? And then somewhere we'll get The Christmas Carol in there as well. But uh, this is like, those are my two favorite Christmas movies. You know, you can't go wrong with Jimmy Stewart and Cary Grant. I don't care what anybody says, right? You can't go wrong. So, so we're going to watch The Bishop's Wife. But in the movie The Bishop's Wife, Bishop Rome shares a Christmas Eve message with a small local congregation. But unknown to the bishop, the angel Dudley has changed the message. The focus of the message uh, that Dudley changed it to is on the giving of gifts. If you've never seen the movie, uh, you can watch it. I think it's well worth the time. It's a, it's a great movie. And so watch the movie, and you'll see the, you'll hear the message. Gifts play a large role in the celebration of Christmas, don't they? I mean, we, we were sitting in Sunday school this morning, and my wife asked a question about gift giving, you know, about uh, what gift you love that you gave this year or something like that. And, so, you know, we, we love receiving gifts, but we also love giving gifts. There's something about giving gifts that does something inside of us, does something to our heart, to our spirit. I believe that we, uh, if, if the gifts are done out of love, given out of love, and they're, they're received with joy and gladness, I think we, we're, we're more satisfied with what we give than what we get. I honestly believe that. Uh, but we have this. And, and so we talk about this idea that it plays such a large role at Christmas. The history of gift giving can be traced back through the ages. Now, as a matter of fact, I was doing a little research online, and one of the websites I had said that gift giving can be traced all the way back to the caveman. How do you know that? Were you there? Really? Was there like some drawing on a wall with a guy holding a gift with a bow? And you know, like, Merry Christmas, you know? I don't know. However, I do know this. In regard to Christmas, gift giving is connected to the gifts of the Magi. The gifts presented by the wise men uh, in our story this morning. And, and there's something about that. And of course, we look at the history of the church and when did this all start? There's a lot of things that go on, a lot of, you know, uh, whether or not this came from some other culture or some other religious it was brought in to draw people to church. I'm not going to get into all of, all of that and get bogged down with all that minutia. What I see here is the wise men brought gifts, we give gifts, and I believe there's a connection somewhere. Okay? But I believe the connection goes beyond gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I believe it's more. Because while we connect the gifts of the Magi with Advent, I would like for us, each of us, to consider the other gifts. The other gifts that were given at Christmas that are often not considered or thought of in relation to the Christmas story. So let's this morning take a look at, we're going to look at the gifts of the Magi, but I'm going to put them in the middle, and I want to look at something else at the beginning and something at the end that I think are just as relevant and just as important, if not more so. The first of these I refer to as the gift of the star. The gift of of the star. Imagine for a moment we just, you know, we sing songs like Oh Holy Night and, and other songs and we see, you know, the, the, these imagery, this, these pictures of, of a nativity and a star hanging over, you know, and shining down. We see in our story that, that the Magi come looking for the king of the Jews, the king of Israel and, um, you know, there's a lot of study that can be done on these ideas of, of the wise men. They probably came from the Babylonian, what was known as the Babylonian region in the east. And they might have even been descendants of those that were part of the, um, the school of teachers and prophets and students of Daniel. 
So they would have been, had knowledge in the, of the old, things of the Old Testament. Some studies have referred to them as kingmakers. That their reason for going out and doing this was to anoint kings for for positions of power. There's a lot of a lot of different studies and things out there on that. For our purpose today, what I want us to realize is, is they came seeking a king. They came seeking a king. The gift was there for all to see. However, I mean, I I, I don't know if you ever thought about this before. And if I had a picture up here, I'd throw one up, but I'm, I don't. If a star's up in the sky and it's so bright that these guys in the east, let's put them over in Babylon, that's quite a ways over there to the east. If, if they see it for a long enough period of time to travel to Jerusalem and see it when they leave the palace of Herod, don't you think others probably have noticed so this, this, this astronomical anomaly taking place here? Something's going on in the skies, and everybody's looking at it. <clears throat> everybody's seeing it to some degree. However, it's only those who would seek it who will find it. Think about that for a moment. They had a specific goal in mind to find the king of the Jews, to seek him out. The star, the star for them had significance. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3 puts it this way. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Think about that. Jesus Christ will come. He was born in a manger. We see in the passage here that they come to a house. So it's possible that you know he's a little bit older here for, for whatever reason. Again, we're not going to get bogged down with the, you know, the, the, the deeper study of all of this. I think what we see here is the fact that the story says they came, they came, they brought gifts, they sought Christ. They were looking for this child who was born in a manger. The star hung over him. They looked for that star. And Isaiah says there is a brightness, a light that will draw the Gentiles to you. That's you and I. That's us. And kings to the brightness of your rising. The idea that, that these these kings were drawn to Jesus because of the brightness of the star, because of what they were looking for while others weren't. And the reason that I think this is important is because this same, going with Isaiah's passage here, the gift is still available today for all who choose to seek it. Jesus hasn't gone anywhere. God is still God. I don't care what's going on in the world. I don't care how bad things look. It doesn't diminish the fact that God is still who God says he is. That Jesus Christ, that what we celebrate today, you can say happy holidays or season's greetings or whatever other term you want to use. It does not negate the fact that today is Christmas Day on the calendar and today we celebrate the birth of the Son of God. And there are those who will choose to Ignore or reject this truth and this fact, but it does, all the rejection from the world, all the, 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 uh, the desire to ignore this fact does not diminish the fact that a light has risen in the east and the king of kings was born. It's available for anyone who chooses to see it, but the decision rests solely upon the individual. Try as hard as you want to ignore this fact. Try as hard as you want to reject the truth. Rejecting the truth does not make the truth false. It just makes your rejection false. You see, the decision is simple. We can follow the path of a Herod, or we can seek the one true king. Herod and his, his scribes, he said, okay, give, tell me the story here. What's going on? And they said, well, yeah, there's, there's a, you know, in the Old Testament there, it says that this child will be born in Bethlehem. And Herod, he says to them, okay, well, you go find him, come back and let me know. Herod could care less about the king of the Jews. Herod cared about Herod. We know this because he would kill his own son for fear he would take the throne. Why in the world would he accept Jesus Christ? So he's unwilling, you know, he, his plot is, to, is, of course, to stay in power, to stay in control. And he, his, his, he's so concerned that he's going to lose, imagine this for a minute. Here's a grown man. I don't know how long he thinks he's going to live. 
concerned of losing his throne to a newborn infant. It's crazy. And so we do see in the story, of course, then what Herod does is he kills all the boys two years and younger in the region, but God had a plan. God has a plan. And even Herod can't negate God's plan and God's purpose. But we do see here that he had, he had the opportunity, the scribes gave him the scripture and said, this is what it is. And so instead of accepting it, he chose to reject it. And there are those today who will choose to reject this truth. But just like the, the star in the sky and the, 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 the truth of the magic, so also we must hang on, hang on to that truth as well. We may not see a star in heaven today, or last, we might not have seen one last night that hangs over a stable or over a house, but what we do see is this, the word of God, the truth of God, and the fact that Jesus Christ came for us. We cannot reject that fact. So, what are you seeking today? They saw the star. We see the Savior. And again, this, you know, like, like it says in the scripture, a Savior who's Christ the Lord. The second thing we see here is the gift of gifts. You know, it's kind of hard to... to talk about this and, and not bring up the fact that there were gifts given. Right? There were three, as a matter of fact, weren't there? There were three gifts. God pre represents uh, we have gold. The first gift. This is gold. Okay, like it is not real. Don't worry if it was. And bank it. Uh, we have gold. Gold represents royalty. Now, Again, in my in my studies this week and, and looking through this, I, I want I want to say something I think is quite unique. There are some who would say that the Magi understood who Jesus was. I don't think they necessarily did. I think the gifts that were given were not because the Magi said we need these gifts, but because God said, I want you to take those gifts. This is God's plan, not man's. He laid this out. And so he somehow represented or, or got them to represent and to bring these three things and each carries with it a significant uh, perspective. Gold, of course, is the one that's often used to pay homage to a king or ruler. If you're going to go visit a ruler uh, or a king, you know, you better bring something worth its weight in gold. And the only thing worth its weight in gold is gold. And it's not chocolate gold. It's gold gold, right? But you bring that. The second thing here, and I'm going to bring both of these up here because these little tiny bottles and uh, you can't see them, but I can't read them without having them both. There's a label with the same color. Frankincense. Okay? Now I can remember once uh, uh, somebody asked a little boy what were the three gifts of the wise men and he said gold, frankenstein, and myrrh. I don't think that's it. Okay? Uh, it's frankincense. And I, you know, frankincense is really one of those unique things. It's, uh, it's um, a different kind of oil. It has a different smell to it. And frankincense as an oil represented divinity. Okay? It was often used in other cultures in rituals of adoration. It was an incense that signified divinity. If you if you were worshiping a, a deity, frankincense was often could often have been close by. And so we have here uh, the, the, the Magi bringing a gift, the wise men bringing a gift that signifies the divine Christ. So what do we have here? We have the Christ the King and Christ the Divine. So what's this cover? It covers two different, two different perspectives of Jesus Christ, doesn't it? It shows us who he is as King of Kings, okay? But it also shows us who he is as the Son of God. And again, I don't think that the, the wise men picked up on this, but I believe that this was orchestrated by the divine intuition and knowledge of God. This is my Son who will be King this is my son who is my son. And this brings us to the third one, which is myrrh. Okay, now myrrh is not something you're just going to find in the front. I think you'll find frankincense in your pantry either. Myrrh is kind of interesting because it has a whole different perspective. While we find here the, the human ruler and the divine Christ in myrrh, we find an ointment that is often used at, at, for medicinal purposes especially in preparation of the body for death. 
Okay, so whenever when a body, when, when someone died, myrrh was often used to prepare the body for burial. So now what we have here is a, a human king, a divine son, who will die for us. And we see this, especially when we look at John 19, 39, where it says, And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Nicodemus came to prepare the body for burial. So we see God's entire divine plan wrapped up in these three gifts if we stop and think about what he's about ready to do here. There's significance, and again, uh, whether the wise men understood this or not, it's not important. God understood it. God knew what his son would come to do. So when we talk about their, them following the star and bringing these gifts, they're looking for the king of kings, the Lord of lords, that one who will die for, for us, die for them, and just he'll die for us. Of course, we do see that he, you know, uh, in a few months we'll be celebrating Easter. And, of course, we'll talk about the resurrection, right? You know, that's an interesting thing about the resurrection, kind of a little side note here. Um, we don't talk about it much as far as our perspective is concerned. If someone passes away, we talk about the fact that they're in heaven with the Father. But you know, are in the presence of Christ. And that's a wonderful thing. But you know what else is more exciting than that? I think is the fact that one of these days we will all be resurrected into his presence for eternity. The resurrection is much a part of our lives. If Jesus was resurrected, we will be resurrected. Right? Everything he did, we did. So the idea here. So we do see this, uh, this perspective here. The gifts of the Magi serve as a reminder to each of us that Jesus Christ was more than this lowly infant born in a manger. He is the King of Kings. He is God incarnate, and he will die for you and for me. And, and again, no matter what the world tries to do, you cannot take those facts away. You cannot erase those facts from history and the truth of God, his word. So we, we stand on those things. We hold on to those things. We look at the story now. We look at what, what is given to us here. We think about what, what Matthew was sharing. And I say to myself, thank you that Jesus Christ, you are my king. You are ruler over all. That Jesus Christ, you are God. You sit at the right hand of the Father today. And you inter intercede on my behalf. And why do you do that? Because you are divine. You died for me and you rose again. Gold, frankincense, myrrh. Okay, bring that connection together when you honor Jesus for who he is and for what he's done. This brings us to the third gift. It's the gift of God. Okay, so we have a gift of a star, something that everybody could see. We have the gift of, gift of Christ, something that everybody can hear, right? They might not understand the story of the wise men or whatever, uh, you know, um, I know some traditions even give them names, okay? For some reason, we think there are only three, and yet, who says they only travel just three? We have three gifts, three guys, right? They travel usually in larger groups, even up to 12 or so. So, it could, you know, they could have, hey, that, that's a lot of gifts, right? But we have the gift of God, and what is this gift of God? His Son. The real gift of Christmas is not a star. It's not gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It's not what we'll find under the tree or not find under the tree this morning. If you haven't opened your gifts yet. It's Jesus Christ. And that's what we celebrate. That's the gift of God. And why? Because he interceded for us on our behalf. He came to live and die. We have the gift of Jesus Christ. Christ, which gives us God's other gift, the gift of salvation. We have been set free from the bondage of sin and death because of Jesus. Through his death, Jesus did for each one of us what we were incapable of doing on our own. We could not overcome the power of sin. We could not overcome the, the condemnation that comes with death. But Jesus Christ saved us from the bondage of sin, and he restored our relationship to our Heavenly Father. We were incapable of doing Jesus Christ did for all. And this child that we celebrate, whose birth we celebrate in a manger, whose death we will honor and remember here in a few months, 
this, this, this man, Jesus Christ, this son of God, this king, this divine king who will die for us. He dies for a purpose. It wasn't a senseless death. It wasn't a death that we look at and say, well, you know, what, pur what purpose did it save? Jesus Christ came to die that we might have life and have it more abundantly, that we might be restored to the into the relationship with our Heavenly Father, that relationship was severed at the fall. It's ours again if we accept Him. If we accept this gift that God has given us, and like so many gifts, I mean, I, I you know, I think about the fact that in gift giving, it's never happened to me. I pray it's never happened to you that you give someone a gift and they reject it. Because the power of the receiver is there. I couldn't imagine for a moment if Mary or Joseph had said, you know what? We don't want the gold. We don't want the frankincense. We don't want your myrrh. You're from the Babylonian region. We don't want your gifts. Because they're not of us. They're foreign. And there are those today who reject Jesus Christ because to them he's foreign. They reject this gift of God. They don't want it. Why? Because it doesn't fit into their lifestyle. It doesn't fit into their schedule. It doesn't fit into the way they think. And it's easier to reject God's gift than to accept it and accept what comes with it. They would rather reject salvation and reject God's gift than to receive by the grace of God that he's offered to each and every one of us. The events surrounding our passage this morning and the special gifts brought by the Magi were alluded to by the prophet Isaiah. Going back to Isaiah chapter 60, he said, The multitude of camels shall cover your land. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. I believe what Isaiah is doing here as a prophet is he's also pointing to a, this future event when these, these individuals, these wise men, will come and they will bring these gifts of gold and of incense, okay, uh, of, of frankincense and incense, this idea here that they will proclaim the praises of the Lord, that this will be the truth that, that, that they will bring with it. The coming of the Christ child, in whose name we celebrate today, took the world by surprise. I was doing some thinking about this and this whole event and what's taking place and, and it began to kind of click some things in my mind because I, I went back and looked at Matthew and Luke, two big areas where the story occurred and I realized something okay um, but the wise men were looking for a star in the east or they came from the east looking for the star then when Mary and Joseph got to Bethlehem the star was there it was probably there when they left to head there been hanging around a while. We know it was there when they got there, when the wise men got there. So what does this tell me? The innkeeper missed it. It was over his stable. Totally missed it. I just thought that was kind of interesting. The chief priests and the scribes missed it. Herod goes to them and says, hey, tell me about this thing. Well, this is what's going to happen in Bethlehem. Did they go seeking it out to find out what the truth was all about? They missed it. Herod missed it big time. Because his whole purpose was Herod. His whole, and you know what I found? That most people won't accept the gift of God because they're so much like Herod. And I don't mean that they want to kill their children. What I mean is, is they're all about themselves. And the gift of God interferes with me. So I'll reject the gift for the sake of myself. And this is what Herod did. If not for the angels, the shepherds would have missed it. And we talk about that, that story there in and, and, and Luke uh, 2, you know, the one, the other Christmas story that's often shared at this time of year. And the shepherds say, let's go see what all this commotion is about. Well, they couldn't have been too far off that they were able to get there that night. And yet it took a, a, took a host of heaven of heavenly messengers to bring the truth of the message to them. They missed it. 
would have missed it if not for that. But once they got there and saw it, their lives were changed. They were blessed that they didn't have to miss it. If not for the promise of the Holy Spirit, we'll miss it. John chapter 14 puts it this way. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. See that? The world can't receive this. The innkeeper. Herod. The scribes. Couldn't receive the truth. Hanging over there. The spirit of truth in the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. A little while longer, and the world will see me, but no more, but you will see me because I live, you live also. And that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So how do we know Jesus? It is the spirit of truth that comes to us, that reveals this truth to us. This is where it comes from. This is what God offers us. The Christ, this Christmas day, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, I, my prayer is that each one who hears these words would, like the wise men, come seeking. Come seeking he who was born king, not only of the Jews, Is Jesus your king today? If not, it will be the Holy Spirit who will be your star. It will be the Holy Spirit who can guide you. It will be the Holy Spirit that can bring you into all truth. But it's also the Holy Spirit that you can choose to reject. The Holy Spirit can bring to you this gift, this gift of God. Not a gift of, of just a star in heaven. Not a gift of... Uh, a temporal gift like gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but a gift of eternal life, a gift that will that will last forever if you just allow Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Let the Holy Spirit allow let allow Jesus Christ to be your King. Under to understand and accept the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. to know the truth who died for you. This is whom God has called us to, to celebrate and to serve. Is he your Savior today? Let's bow our heads. Father, today it is my desire, not mine, Lord, it's your desire, it's always your desire every day. We, we celebrate Christmas on a Sunday and that's a wonderful thing. But you know, you're every day of the year, 365 days of the year, you're, you're seeking the lost. Jesus Christ didn't just come on one day to receive those who would accept him on that day, but you are constantly seeking and reaching out to those who need your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray today, Lord, we pray as a body of believers for those out there that, that have not accepted Jesus Christ. They're, they're looking for something else. Show them the truth, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit bring that truth to them, that he can be their King of kings, that he can be their Lord God, and that he died for their sins. Make that truth known, Lord, and help those who do not know Christ to receive it and to accept it. And for the rest of us, let us hold on to that truth. Let us grow into that. Let the Holy Spirit be our, our, our constant reminder and our guide. As he, as he draws the lost, so, so also, Father, help him to strengthen us as believers. This is your will. Let us live according to your will and your purpose. We ask this in Jesus' name.
God bless you all. Now we're going to have communion, so if you're watching at this point, you may want to pause it if you don't have the elements, if you want to get something at home to join us. We're going to take part in communion. And so um, communion cups have been handed out this morning, and hopefully you've got partly prepared, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Have mine ready. So partly prepared. I mean, what a blessing. Celebrate the birth of our Lord by sharing in his last meal before his death. To celebrate this time together. And so as we do so this morning, I've, I've taken this from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in the words of the Apostle Paul. And he says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which, his, which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This morning, we're going to take this element together as a reminder of the, the, the sacrifice that was made by our gods, by our God, Jesus Christ, Son of God. So, Father, as we partake together today, I ask your blessing upon this, this wafer, this element, this bread, that, Lord, you would anoint it, that, it's, that the truth of who Jesus Christ is, Lord, it's not found in the partaking of these elements. It's found in the life, the death, and the resurrection. That we do this as a reminder to us of the price that was paid, the significance of the murder, and our story this morning is embodied in what we're about to partake together. So Lord, bless this element in Jesus' name. Amen. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we partake together in this cup this morning as a reminder to us of the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And so, if we are to be forgiven, truly forgiven, and brought into right standing with our Heavenly Father, a sacrifice needed to be made one for all. That sacrifice is Jesus. And so, Father, as we partake of this juice together this morning as a reminder to us of the shed blood of our Savior, Father, I pray that you would bless it, bless those who are partaking together. As we participate together in this, Lord, I pray that we would be united as a body of believers in one truth, and that truth is Jesus Christ. We are privileged, Lord, to call Jesus our Lord. So, Father, bless this cup in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take together. And now, Lord, I pray your blessing upon each and every one present this morning and those that are online listening. I pray, Lord, that you would just bless their day. And as we go through this day and celebrate the birth of our Savior, let us not forget just how important it is as a child of yours hold on to this precious gift. And for those who are who have not received the gift, you're sharing with them today, and I pray that they would receive it with glad and joyful hearts, and that, and that their lives would be changed for the kingdom of God. Go with us, we pray. Keep your hand upon us. Bless each and every one present, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a really great week, and may the Lord be with you. And as always, um, I want to just again thank you all. If you're, if you want to donate this morning, you can put money in the basket down there. By the way, if you're here and you want some gold, you can take some gold with you. Today. No, you can't take any gold. The gold will be distributed to you by yes, by the, by the treasurer. <laughs> so please, I don't want to eat all that chocolate. So you know, we'll make sure that. Follow us on Facebook. 
uh, you can do that as well. And may God bless your week. Have a wonderful week. The sermon will be on later this afternoon.